Why Stroll's move on Alonso was so dangerous. Lance Stroll. Uh, I thought I'd be singing his praises after an incredible qualifying where he managed to haul his Aston Martin to P5 once penalties had been applied. A fantastic opportunity to score double points with both cars starting in the top 10. Well, his teammate scored a few points after a sensational move on Kevin Magnussen on the last lap. Lance Stroll, not so much. The move he pulled on Fernando Alonso was incredibly dangerous and could have been so much worse had things panned out only slightly differently. So I think most of you are in agreement that Lance Stroll was at fault for the incident with the two-time champ. But I've also seen a few arguments, shock, it's F1 Twitter, where the other side feel as though Lance didn't do all too much wrong. Well, he did. And here's why. Let's paint the picture for you. Fernando Alonso is in the slipstream of Stroll and quite easily was attempting to pull alongside him with a fair bit of the straight still to go. The Canadian driver is well within his rights to move to the left or right to try to make things more difficult for the Spaniard. There's plenty of space to do so. The problem in this particular incident is how late he moves. The judgement from Stroll about the closing speed of Alonso was so far off. He moves across at almost the point of which the Alpine is moving out of the slipstream to commit to the left-hand side. You cannot do that. Yes, the drivers are aliens and have cat-like reactions, but not even Tesla Autopilot could have avoided that collision. It's absolutely on stroll for moving so ridiculously late. And for what benefit? There really was none. So the crash happens. This could have got a hell of a lot uglier. First and foremost, we're lucky to be running 800 kilogram Formula One cars these days. If we stripped off a few hundred kilograms like F1 cars in years gone by, Alonso's car would have almost certainly gone flying. The image that immediately springs to mind is the horrific crash Mark Webber had at Valencia when he crashed into the back of a caterham. Instead, we saw one of the most insane wheelies an F1 car can pull off. So that's one part of the accident we're glad went better than it could have. The other is where the Alpine hit the barrier. There was an opening only a few metres prior to where Fernando hit the wall and had he gone in there it could have been a totally different story. Thankfully we are talking in ifs and buts, however I think it's definitely worth highlighting that it was a lucky escape and moves like that cannot be pulled by the drivers. Lance Stroll is known for not being very good in his mirrors, his battle with Albon this year in Saudi springs to mind as one example, so maybe he needs one of those stickers you usually get on car mirrors to say objects may be closer than they appear. Surprisingly, or not surprisingly, Lance after the race didn't feel like he was at fault. He said, I left Fernando plenty of room on the left, it was a big difference in speed. He did admit he moved late, but then also said, he could have moved earlier and gone more to the left, and he didn't have to get so close to me either. A lot of different ways you can look at the incident. Leaving Fernando plenty of room is absolutely not what the problem is here. He was committing to a space that changed rapidly and caused a horrible shunt because of it. All drivers tend to stay in the slipstream for as long as possible to gain as much advantage as they can, and they then trust the driver in front to not make knee-jerk reactions like Stroll did. Anyway, Lance has been given a three-place grid drop and two penalty points, which is about what I expected the FIA to give out. There you have it, a look into the scary incident between Stroll and Alonso. What did you make of it? What penalty would you have given? Let us know in the comments section below.